Hi Bobcats, in this video we're going to take a look at strong and weak acids and bases. What I'd like to do is to describe down at the particle level, what is that difference between a strong and a weak acid or base? Strong and weak in a chemical sense refer to how much the chemical has ionized. So yes, yeah, strong and weak, that's all about the percent ionization. If something is considered a strong acid, it ionizes 100% um, when it hits water. So we're using a symbol here of HA to stand for an acid. So H is obviously the uh, H plus ion that ionizes. Um, and then the uh, A minus is everything that's left behind after that H plus has left the molecule. And so if something is considered a strong acid, it's going to have 100% dissociation after that substance hits water. If you look at all of the particles that are present, which is shown here in this cartoon, every last one of those particles is an ion. It's either an H plus, which is the little white ones with the plus sign, or it's an A minus, which are the big green ones with the minus sign. But on the other hand, for something like a weak acid, if you look at the particles that are present in water after a weak acid has dissolved, nearly all of them are HA molecules stuck together, like this one I'm circling right here. Only a very small percentage of them will break apart to give you the H plus and the A minus ions, which are shown, uh, I don't want to scribble too much on here, so I still want it to be legible, but these um, particles right here, the green with the minus all by itself and the white with the plus all by itself, um, those are the little teeny fraction that actually dissociated. If we're going to put numbers to this, the percent dissociation of a weak acid is typically around 1 to 3 percent. So that would mean if we had 100 HA molecules dissolved in water for a weak acid, somewhere between one and three of those 100 molecules would break apart to ions. The other 97 to 99% would stay stuck together as HA molecules. And the reason this is important is that for most of the chemical reactions that acids undergo, the active ingredient is that H plus ion. So in a strong acid, every possible H plus ion is available to do those reactions. But in a weak acid, only about one to 3% of those um, H plus ions are available because the rest of them are stuck to the A minus ions. If you need to determine if a particular acid is a strong acid or a weak acid, there's a very simple process. Look at this list that's under this first bullet point. If an acid is on this list, it's a strong acid. If an acid is one of the literally millions of acids that's not on this list, then it would be a weak acid. So just keep this list handy and that'll tell you if something is a strong acid. If it's not a strong acid, it must be a weak acid. And just to review, a strong acid is something that dissociates 100%. So that means that all of these HClO4 molecules, as soon as they hit water, they break apart to give us H plus ions and ClO4 minus ions. There are absolutely no molecules of HClO4 left intact in the solution. Every last one of them has broken apart. Weak acids, on the other hand, are going to be any acid that's not on that strong list. And when you look at a solution of a weak acid, such as this one here, which is acetic acid, somewhere around 97 to 99% of the molecules will be stuck together. And only about one to 3% of the molecules will have broken apart to give us these ions. So the amount of H plus ion that's available in solution to do the reactions that are typical of acids is very, very small. 
Strong bases can also be identified by a similar technique. There is a very short list of strong bases, and that's what these first two bullet points are all about. They are all of the group one hydroxides, so that would be sodium hydroxide, lithium hydroxide, cesium hydroxide, etc. And then the heavier group two hydroxide, so starting with calcium and moving on down the table, so calcium hydroxide, strontium hydroxide, barium hydroxide. So that means when these compounds dissolve in water, you do not have any NaOH stuck together. It is 100% broken up to give you sodium ions and hydroxide ions. So we get this 100% dissociation. So every last little bit of NaOH is broken apart to sodium ions and hydroxide ions. If it's a group two hydroxide, there's kind of an interesting thing here because for every one calcium hydroxide that dissolves, you actually are gonna get two hydroxide ions. So you get more hydroxide ions um, from the group twos than you get from an equal concentration of group ones. So weak bases are any compound that is considered a base that's not on that short list of strong, as, as strong bases. They dissociate less than 100%. And so you really don't get a lot of hydroxide ion in one of these solutions. So for example, if we're looking at something like ammonia, which is kind of the classic example of a weak base, about 97 to 99% of the molecules will exist as NH3, and only about one to three percent of them will have undergone this reaction with water to create the ammonium ions and hydroxide ions. So it's considered a weak base because you just have a little bit, one to three percent of the hydroxide ion that you would expect for the solution. The types of weak bases that I would expect you to be able to identify are a group of compounds known as amines. And you can think of amines as being simply substituted ammonias. Ammonia is that great Lewis acid, uh, sorry, Lewis base, because it has this lone pair of electrons right there, which it can donate. And that lone pair is what makes for this empty spot up here on the top of this Vesper structure. That lone pair is there repelling all of the bonding pairs and pushing them away, giving us this trigonal pyramidal structure. So um, if you were to take one of these hydrogen atoms and instead substitute an organic group like this group right here, which is called a methyl group, you end up with another weak base. It's known as methylamine. And um, it's possible to substitute more than one um, hydrogen at a time. Uh, if we took another one of these hydrogens and put a methyl group in its place, we would call this dimethylamine. If we did that for the third hydrogen, we'd call it trimethylamine. Um, if you remember back from when we looked at organic nomenclature, this prefix meth means one carbon. And so this methyl group right here has just a single carbon in it. In this example, we're going to take several compounds and classify each first as an acid or a base, then indicate if it's strong or weak, and then identify what's going to be the species most common in solution. So the first of these is NaOH. The presence of that hydroxide ion right there indicates that this is a base. And since sodium is a group one metal, this is going to be a strong base. As a strong base, this species is going to completely dissociate. So we're going to get all sodium ions and separated hydroxide ions. And the hydroxide ions are really the, the thing that make it a base. Ammonia is the classic example of a weak base. This is just something you'll need to memorize most likely. And because it is a weak base, it doesn't dissociate very much. So that majority species is just the weak base exactly as it's written in H3. H3, C6H507, well, the 
presence of this H3 at the beginning tells us that this is an acid. If you compare this to our list of strong acids, it is not on that list, so that makes it a weak acid. Being a weak acid, the majority species is the whole thing, the whole enchilada still stuck together. So H3, C6, H5, O7. H3, PO4. Well, once again, this guy starts with H3, so that's telling us that it's an acid. And if you go look at our list of strong acids, it's missing. So this must be a weak acid. And since it's a weak acid, the majority species will be the whole molecule stuck together, H3PO4. And last but not least, we have CH3, CH2, NH2. We've got to identify this as being either an acid or a base. Well, it does not start with an H, so it's not going to be an acid. So that tells us it must be a base, since we have to, this problem is telling us it's either an acid or a base. So no H at the front, it's not an acid. Um, if we look at our list of strong bases, it is not on that list, so it must be a weak base. And indeed, this is an example of a substituted ammonia. Instead of having NH3, one of those hydrogens was removed and was replaced with the CH3CH2 group. Since there are two carbons in this group, it's referred to as an ethyl group, and this compound is known as ethyl amine. So our goal was to figure out the differences at the particle level between strong and weak as applied to acids and bases. And so strong is going to be something that uh, ionizes, or another term you'll hear for that is dissociates. So it either ionizes or dissociates 100%. And um, weak is something um, that ionizes much less than that, uh, typically on the order of one to 3%.